In with that question we've been unpacking on Newsnight tonight, are cash in transit heists um, resurfacing? Four suspects were arrested in connection with a, a cash in transit heist in Boxburg this morning. Of course, dramatic video footage of that particular heist uh, making its way and going viral on social media. Annelise Burgess is the author of the book South Africa's Cash in Transit Epidemic Uncovered. She joins us now via Skype. Good evening, Annelise, and thanks for your time. Just in terms of what you were able able to uncover um, while writing your book, you looked a lot at the figures and certainly there's no question when we compare the statistics that cash and transit heists are making their way back up in South Africa. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I call it an epidemic, and it certainly is an epidemic. Um, you know, in, in 20, 2006, we had about 470 uh, cash and transit heists, and then it fell dramatically. Um, in 2014, we had 180 heists, and last year it was back up to almost 370 possibly even a little bit higher. So we are certainly seeing an enormous spike in, in this crime. And, and I think what uh, that video that we all saw today, what it shows is that not only is this crime increasing, but the crime is changing. It's becoming more brazen and these, and these robbers are taking bigger and bigger chances. Um, I mean, I don't, it, over the past year, we've seen these types of, of cases where cash and transit vans are blown up in in on highways and today in a in a town uh, and this is really extremely worrying it's not only the amount of cash and transit heists we have between one and three a day now but it's the way and the nature uh, of these heists. And perhaps let's unpack that a bit further because it's also a central focus of your book, Annalise, the, the changing tactics. Uh, at least from what you've been able to study of them, um, how would you describe these changes? I call it a mutating virus because that was the easiest way for me to explain that the the essential nature of this crime um, is still there. It's people wanting to steal money. Um, but the way it's being done has changed quite dramatically. The use of, of explosives, I mean, that's very new. Um, we now see these vans being blown up with explosives. That's very, very new. It's a whole new step up in terms of the level of violence being used. And then there's an unspoken aspect of cash and transit um, crime, which is called uh, cross-pavement incidents. These aren't the kind of classic um, cases that we know where vehicles are, are, are rammed off the road or, or blown up, but where guards are attacked when they transport the cash from the armored vehicles to the ATM or the bank or the retailer. And that particular strain of this virus has increased with almost 50% over the last year. Earlier, my colleague Colim Gambi spoke to Johan Burgess, who's now, um, Johan Boysen rather, who's now the head of uh, investigations at Fidelity. And of course, you would know him as a former official of the Hawks. And he says that um, he believes that about 90% of the time you do have the involvement of uh, security officials, whether it's the South African Police Service, the SANDF, or even individuals of private security companies who um, facilitate and are involved in some of these. Heist. Um, does your does your research uh, speak to that as well? Absolutely, it's one of the most shocking things to come out of my research. Um, I saw what General Boyson said, and I was surprised that he added the defense force into the mix. Uh, I don't have evidence of that in terms of the, the cases that I looked at. But the one thing that is absolutely indisputable is the involvement of the police. I looked at, I unpacked 10 heists to be able to try and get a grip on this. And of the 10 heists that I looked at, only three of them were done without police involvement. And when I talk about police involvement, I'm not talking about cops turning the, uh, and, you know, looking the other way. I'm talking about policemen who are involved in transporting guns to the scene, transporting money away from the scene. Cops who are involved in the planning, the execution, who are involved in bribes. Um, a very recent case, uh, a big robbery of a cash center in, in Emelahleni, where 104 million rand was stolen. The mastermind of that heist was an acting police detective 
in Emilatliani. And he he planned the whole thing. And the you know, it's so brazen. When the the heist was discovered, he was one of the first responders on the scene, taking statements, pretending to be a policeman. Meanwhile, he was he was the um, you know, he was the master brain. And that is very much par for the course. Cop involvement is a huge worry. It's a very real thing. Um, and it's one of the reasons I believe that they can't get a handle on this because, you know, you, the people who are supposed to, like, you know, investigate uh, uh, the crime are, are involved. Um, yeah, and, and you're really bringing me to my next point here, that to the extent that police officers are, are involved as much as they are, how does it affect, number one, the investigation, but also the, the conviction rate of those who then become accused in, these, uh, in some of these cases? Okay, so, you know, today we had this incredible um, case and, and people were arrested and that's fantastic and the flying squad did an amazing job and people put their lives on the line. The big question we have to ask isn't about arrests. We have to ask what happens after the arrest. And I would, I, I'm going to stay on top of this particular case because I would like to see if these guys, number one, make it as far as court, whether they are given bail, and secondly, whether the, the, the case um, is withdrawn because that happens so often. It's one of the big problems is that we, you know, cash and transit companies have intelligence networks. They say they know who the guys are. Arresting them isn't the problem. It's getting them to court and putting together a prosecutable case and taking it through court and putting people behind bars. And that's what's not happening. But how far up do the connections have to go, Annalise, in order for um, this to completely bypass the criminal justice system? I mean, is it a case where you're looking at um, just regional of officers involved here, uh, station commanders that are involved, or does it link to a bigger chain? It's a good question. Um, I think maybe one should one should look at what the criminals themselves say. And some of the shocking things that came out in my book were these guys are saying, you know, it's a very low risk crime. Um, it's highly lucrative. It's extremely easy to do. And it's very, very low risk because they say, number one, my chances of being arrested are very low. Um, you know, and then if I do get arrested, I can try and buy off the investigating officer. If that doesn't work, I can try and buy off the prosecutor. If that doesn't work, I'll try and buy off the magistrate. Um, I think this is a very real problem in our criminal justice system. Um, these, the, uh, the, the criminals themselves say uh, they're not afraid of, 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 of the consequences. Um, as to how high all of that goes, I, you know, I, I don't have an opinion on that. But um, at the at the coal face, where the stuff really matters, where it depends on having incorruptible, good, experienced, committed uh, police officers, committed prosecutors who who can't be bought off. That's in my view, with a big problem lies. All right, certainly it sounds like they're taking advantage of all the cracks that exist institutionally uh, within the security um, cluster. Thank you for coming on to the show, Annelise. Annelise Berger is at least giving us her insight there into the cash and transit heist, and she's uh, authored a book um, with that very same title looking into um, the impact and the epidemic, as she calls it, of cash and transit heist in South Africa.